12. All right, we're back. Here it is, the three o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. Welcome to Think Tech Talks. Our show today is called Jam Bios, creating a collaborative writing platform. We're going to find out what that is. We're going to talk to starting up startup culture in Hawaii and address the issue of whether Jam Bios is starting up startup culture in Hawaii or what. If you want to ask a question, participate in discussion, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI, write that down, or call us at 415-871-2474. We will take your call. So our guests for the show are Beth Carvin and Rudy Menon. And Shambos is a locally owned early stage startup and has created a collaborative writing platform for users to preserve their memories in one place and provides the ability to invite others to contribute their stories to that memory. So we're going to talk to Beth and Ruby about this now and find out what they're doing. Welcome, Beth. Hi, Jay. Nice to see you. Hi. And Ruby. Hi, Jay. Old nice buddy. Nice to see you again. Yeah, great to see you guys. So we're always interested in startups, especially the ones that look like they're going to make a lot of money. All right. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> so, Jam Bios, yes. what is it? Keska se kasa. Okay, Jam Bios. Well, it's all about memories. It's about remembering. It's about, it, it's an opportunity to look back and think about those different times in your life and uh, save those and preserve them and bring in your friends and your family and start to create these life memory, uh, life memories, biographies, if you will, uh, but together with your friends. A reverse time capsule. Uh, yes, in a way. Um, well, right now everything is getting so um, transient and impermanent. You know, you've got your isn't that true? Your Snapchat, and it's yeah. like everything is like goes in and comes yeah. out. I go to stress management classes and zone out. You know, like yoga zone. Okay, and when I do, sometimes I fall asleep, but that's another story. <laughs> Other times. I go on trips, like Proust, my favorite uh -huh. French author. I go on trips back into the past. Yes. And it all reveals itself, you know, from 30, 40, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago. All these memories come back to me, memories I would never otherwise be able to call up. And there's yeah. value in that, at least for me anyway. Yes. So are you saying there's value for that in everybody? Well, I don't know for everybody. There may be some people out there who don't find the joy in looking back in the memories. But there Maybe is a, they had a tough childhood, you know. They're possible, too. And, the, and yet, in that case, sometimes it can be cathartic to mm. bring up those memories. Mm. But for most people, um, there is a sense of joy in remembering and looking back in those times. And like you say, you think back and it feels good to do that. And uh, we even have a, within Jambios, we have a prompter. We have a, our digital biographer. His name is Monty. And well, I guess could say a digital biographer. What is that? Monty um, asks you questions. So if you, uh, Jambios is set up like a book with chapters of different types of chapters. So whatever you feel like writing about or thinking about, Jay, if you want to think about, like, what was the first car that you ever had? What was the first car that you ever had? You remember? A Dodge. A Dodge. A Dodge something. I can't remember the name okay. of the model, but it was a Dodge. All right. Was it? And when I was in college, I drove it off a small cliff. <laughs> yeah, I remember that pretty well. Well, there you go. See, there's a story in that. <laughs> and in most memories, there is a story. And so Monty is there to just help prompt you. You can pick whatever chapter that you'd like, whether it's your cars or whether it's something, you know, your great-grandparents or... Uh, so from the you know, more trivial types of things. To so that's serious. real time. Mon Monty is not a, a, a computer person. It's a real person. No, no, no. Monty is just, we just call him Monty. He's it's like, like an a avatar. Thing. He's just it's a like character. A, yeah. he's, he's an avatar, so he asks you know. questions. He's just a character. He's a, he's a bot. He just asks you questions yeah. of, uh, that relate to the particular And topic. this goes somehow like artificial intelligence into the database, yeah? Well, I'm not going to call it artificial intelligence, but uh, Monty's pretty smart. Okay, all right. It's like... What was her name? Liza? Back back in the 80s, in the days of DOS, there was a, oh, you're only the, going back the now. DOS line, and you would say, hello, Liza. Right, that's right. In and fact, Liza would say, how are you feeling today, Jay? And I said, I'm feeling fine. And she would say, what makes you say that? And it was all canned oh, responses. Yes. It was like supposed to be a, like your friendly therapist. It's, it's it's like Siri's <laughs> sister or something. <laughs> <laughs> Siri's predecessor, exactly. Siri's great grandmother. Well, actually, we, what we tried to make sure we didn't do with Monty is to make sure that he didn't come out like Clippy. Do you remember Clippy? Oh, Clippy oh, was a Microsoft. Clippy, Clippy was yeah. a Microsoft, and he was a little figure, a little uh, of a paper clip. And if you wanted help, Clippy would bounce around oh, your screen, yeah, and he yeah, was quite yeah. annoying. Yes. So we said Monty has to be wonderful and helpful, but not Clippy. So you're that's pretty sophisticated stuff with Monty, I think. Yeah. I don't. I don't 
wouldn't say it's sophisticated, but it's useful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, um, so when I answer Monty, mm -hmm. and I put my data in, you probably have a bunch of forms I should fill out and all this, mm -hmm. and I, mm, I sort of invest my memories into this system, and it's just mine, mm -hmm. and I have to have a login and all that to get back to my thing, yeah. um, then it, it has, it has my memories all lined up somehow. What, how do I access my memories? Yeah, do I have to have a drink beforehand or what? It helps. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a great question, actually, because one of the things that we really have aimed to do with JamBios is to help organize your memories in a way that's useful. Because right now, if you think about it, people use all these different social media. You post here and you post there, or you write emails to people. And memories come up, but they're all scattered all over the place. They're not yeah. in any one place. Yeah. So with JamBios, what we've tried to do is create it in a very organized way. So we use a literary format. So it's like a book and different chapters. Well, you know, that's actually, when I saw what you were doing and thought about this show, that's exactly what I thought about. Because, for example, you know, I read uh, on the teleprompter our little opener today, right? How do we get that? Well, it's automated. We just know the data for the show, and I push a button, and it generates all the text for the teleprompter introduction. So the same thing with the book. I mean, the book. Mm -hmm. All the data you've collected yeah. about the memories. You could have a, a button like that, and then you could generate what amounts to an autobiography, couldn't you? Yes, you could. And that's why our company is and our product is called Jam, Jam Bios, because of the bios autobiography. Yes, that you're doing. And we call it Jam because it's, it has a collaborative component to What's it. collaborative about it? So what's collaborative about it is, is when you're writing about that uh, Dodge, uh, vehicle that you had, yeah. um, you know, maybe you went on a great Dodge road. Coronet. That the was Dodge the model. Dodge Coronet. Okay, I knew so it would come up. Maybe you had a brother or sister or a friend that you went on some great road trips in that Dodge Coronet. And wouldn't it be nice if you could write out your memories of your Dodge and then send a little, click a little button and invite some of those old friends to add their memories of your wow. Dodge Coronet? Wow, if you can find them, you have to if find them. If you can them. find them, yeah. 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 Does so it integrate with Facebook or any social media? Uh, it will. So yeah, you're going to be able to place uh, memories into Facebook that you just want to get some of that quick kudos yeah. of, from your friends, but also the other way around and bring them in if you want to explore a little I bit. Have, I have a bigger vision, though. I tell you, it comes to mind in my, my push button idea. Yeah. Button, okay. I push the button, and it not only you know prepares the book, but it sends the book to my editor well. in that push button, and or it goes straight to Amazon for publication, vanity publication. I have something for you, Jay. Really? Uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> we're not doing this just for fun, even though I love to use my Jambio myself, but it's also um, a business, and we're looking to make some money. And uh, we have three different revenue opportunities, but one of them is around books. So we feel like as you create your, um, you're having fun remembering and reminiscing with your friends, but at the same time, you are creating this biography. So why not be able to pick parts of your stories and compile them in a book that you can then purchase for a gift book, either for yourself, a keepsake, or for your family, or for your friends, or for presents, hmm. or whatnot. So one of our revenue models is around book publishing. Ah, so but but it's uh, well, maybe it's just the beginning, but it's a book for you. It's a book for oh, yes, your coffee friends, table or your friends yeah. about your whole life. Your, your kids. Or your and that would be very too. interesting. But, but you have to keep that in mind when you wrote the pieces of it, because well, you know, there's maybe you tell too little, maybe you tell too much. You well, know? the beauty of Jambios is is that um, we believe that. Um, our audience will have a lot of private things that they want to write as well. And so for every section that you write in your jam bio, you decide. So you write, and then you say, okay, for this section, who do I want to invite to contribute to that? And who do I want to be allowed to read it? So I might write things that I say, there's no way I'm going to let Jay see that. But there might be something else that I say, oh, Jay will really enjoy this. Let me bring him into this. Contribute. You said contribute. Yes. So that sounds like you say, well, I've written this section about the Dodge Coronet, whatever, and I was getting feedback from other people who might have been aware of that experience, yeah. um, and I put their email or their social media address in there, and, and it goes to them, and it says, Fidel talking about his Dodge Coronet, what can you add to that discussion? That's correct. Uh, or yeah. correct statements that he made. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, and so then uh, this, you or whomever would write your contribution, push the button, it would come back to me, but I might read that and say, 
This is great. I love that story. I didn't even remember that. We went on that trip. I forgot all about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. Let me add it to my Dram bio. Click the button, add it. Or I might say, oh, Jay, I don't want that part of the story out. I may click a different button and say, hey, could you please revise that? Because I really don't want that particular story, but mm, could you tell that other story? It's a conversation, then. So you want to really make sure your jam bios is yours, it's personal, and you want to uh, have some degree of control of what's in but, there. But somebody who contributes um, or uh, you know gives you additional data or correction, whatever, on what you said, that that would not be a correction of your copy. Your copy remains inviolate as you wrote it, as you spoke it. Well, that's it. correct, but you could change it yourself. So yeah. if someone said, hey, Beth, you, you, know, you spelled this wrong or you did this wrong, I can go in and change it yeah. whenever I want. But that person's comments would be there anyway. Yeah, and I could look at the, you know, Joe Dokes uh, knows about my Dodge Coronet. He writes up something. He says, no, it was not a small cliff. It was a big cliff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And now his comment is there for me to access right alongside my yes. my original copy. Huh? That's correct, and how we place it in your jam bio, jam bio is like a sidebar. So if you picture a magazine, you know, if you read old school magazines, and there's all the text, and then there's the sort of grade um, sidebars. It's like that. So you have your jam bio with all of your stories and memories, and then you have all these lovely sidebars of stories from your friends and your family and their contributions. Ruby actually had a great you know, word she came up with. I, that's Talmudic, you, you know. That's the way the Talmud, oh, Talmud. Okay, it took me a second. The, the way the so Talmud saying. is written. Yes. Okay, you have the original yes. copy, mm -hmm. and then you have people commenting on the original copy, and then you have people commenting on the comments on the original copy, and all the comments are written around the margin. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever touches the original copy. But if you if you bought a mm -hmm. classical Talmud book. They would have all these comments about the original commentary. It's very interesting. So you're making uh, so my you're making my uh, my jam bio very special. Well, I think it is so. special. <laughs> okay, Ruby, your involvement now. Well, my title is product manager, but because we're such a small team, I got I guess to, to do a whole bunch of different things: uh, product management, project management, and I also hold the fort down in operations uh, because we have our office over here at Harbor Court. And um, so as a product manager, I work closely with Beth and make sure that uh, we're always thinking about the user, what's the user experience sure. like, um, you know, and even, you know, fine tuning things like what's the psychology of color on the website, you know, making sure that we've got, you know, we're kind of keeping up with all of those trends and keeping everything up to date. Um, working with a small team, which is a, a couple of developers and a creative designer who actually does all of the design work and then hands that off to the developer for coding. So work very closely with them and make sure that we're meeting all of our timelines and executing on time. Um, and then from an operation standpoint, I help Beth with recruiting, um, with just an office management stuff. Uh, so got a little bit of everything. You like startups, don't you? You're a startup kind of person. I actually yes, do. Does. You know, I came from the corporate world. Um, it's very different. Um, but what I love about startup is you don't, you know, like in a corporate environment, you're highly specialized. You know, you it, like when I was in HR, that's all I did. And I always had interest in everything else, but I never got a chance to do any of it. And in startup, I get to do a whole bunch of different things and I can learn stuff if I want to. If mm. I get, if I'm interested in marketing, I can learn about that. I'm not pigeonholed into one space. No, you're not. I'll vouch for you on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know me from a lot of different things. So you both mentioned, um, you know, the HR world. You both mentioned that. Is that part of your orientation in this matter, That's human how, resources? Uh, well, uh, Ruby and I met uh, sort of around that in that um, in addition to running Jam Bios, I uh, am the CEO of Knobscott Corporation that I've been running for 17 years. Knobscott? Yes. What a great name. You're from the Northeast. Yeah, so, well, I know. Uh, Penobscot. Penobscot. Yeah, yeah, yeah in Maine, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, yeah. it was. Uh, anyways, um, so Knobscot Corporation that I also manage is a, um, a HR software company. And so I've been in the HR business for years. And still are. And still are. Am. Yeah, so I'm a vendor side and a technical side. And Ruby uh, has been working in HR for years, and she was getting involved in doing some, creating some So software. what's the relationship between human resources and this program about memory? There's not. It's just that Ruby and I knew each other, so I hired her. She was my mentee, and I was her mentor. And so someone had okay. introduced us, and I was her mentor, and I invited her to. I was so impressed with her, I invited her to help us on this new venture. Good move. 
Thank okay, you. we'll take a short break now. When we come back, we're going to talk about the fact that there really is a relationship between human resources and what you're doing. <laughs> and I will explain what that is. We'll also talk about how you're going to make a million billion on this program. Excellent. We'll, we'll explore that. You'll see. Ooh, you're going to be so rich. We'll be right back. <laughs> we're all part of your community. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to youtube.com, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great 12. content for Hawaii oh. from Think Okay, we're back. We're live. <laughs> Beth Carvin and Ruby Menon, we're talking about Jam Bios. It's a great name for something about Bios. What's the jam about? The jam is the jamming together, jamming, like a, a rock band, and you're jamming. Yeah. So you're jamming when you're uh, doing the collaborative nature yeah, of Jam yeah. Bios. Okay, so I, my thought about the connection between human resources, mm -hmm. although you, you said that was really what brought you together, that yeah. rather than what created the program, but I think it's an orientation. It's about people. Yeah. It's about trying to rationalize social science. It's about trying to rationalize what, what people are and what turns them on and what doesn't turn them on. Um, and so you have to have that kind of orientation if you're going to make a buck, hopefully, you know, sort of you know, coding, characterizing, categorizing their lives, their memories, and thus their lives, their individual persona. Um, that sort of sounds like human resources somehow, doesn't it? In a way it does. And, it, you know, it's people issues, whether it's people issues in the workplace or people's issues in their life. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very similar. Um, whether you're talking about a corporate space or human space. So how far down the trail are you? I mean, we, we start with an idea and we end with a product that everybody wants. Where are you? Uh, well, we're getting there. So uh, the idea had been uh, floating around in my brain and in a few other places for uh, a couple of years, actually and um, decided as I started looking at the business opportunity and really uh, taking the pencil and looking at numbers and so forth to really go for it. And so toward the, you know, we had been building the product for a couple of years very slowly and uh, tur turtle-like, um, but we decided to really ramp it up. We saw the opportunity, and so at the end of last year is when we got the office space here in Honolulu, hired employees, and decided that, you know what, we need to do this and we need to do this now. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, program uh, just launched publicly. And so, so it's out there right now. I can go there. on jambios.com and there it is. There it is. www.jambios.com. Yeah, okay. Let's look at the website. We have it. And you can explain it. And we'll, you know, get the idea of what it is and how to use it. Okay, go. <laughs> Well, somebody go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you register. That's the website. That's <laughs> Put in the website, your email okay. address and you register. What is that all about? Uh, yeah, so uh, if you'd like to get started with it, if what we're talking about is of interest to anybody, uh, you know, I don't know our audience here, but if you would like to think about your memories and go back in time, um, go ahead and sign up and register. And when you do, you'll have the opportunity that you start by picking a few chapter, whatever chapter types you'd like to write about to start with. So if you do want to do write about Jay's car, or if you want to write about um, musical influences, musical memories, or if you want to write about your great grandfather, or your, if you want to write your college time. So you pick your chapters and sign in. And once you get in there, you can start. Um, start writing and the i think the exciting part the exciting part for me when i stopped using it on a test case and started using it for real was after i sent some um i'd written some things i uh i asked for a contribution from i have some relatives in australia that was a branch of our family that we did not know about they came over from the old country uh, and they were not able to come to the u.s they ended up in australia and uh, I asked them for a contribution. I got my first contribution was from my Australian relatives telling me these amazing stories of just things I did not know about the family. And when, that, when the contribution came in, it was 
it was the most exciting thing. So I'd welcome people to uh, you know sign up for the website and just start writing. You don't have to be a great writer or anything. Just put those memories down and get them out there, and you'll start to um, really experience. So I write them up in my own way. Mm -hmm. I push a button and submit that memory. This one memory. What happens to it? What happens then? It will it will display uh, in a book format um, in your Jam bio. So there's a table of contents. So each of your chapters that you pick will be in your table of contents, and you'll start to fill that in as you go. A little at a time. A little at a time. So I have one a glass memory. of wine. I sit. I make a memory. What one memory at a time. Yeah. 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 And the beauty about it too is that it's it's there. It's permanent. It doesn't get pushed down in a feed. You know, like if you're in Facebook, for example, and you've like maybe had this great conversation with a group of people, and you try to look for it two months later, it's gone until the algorithm decides to fork it up a couple of years later to you, you know? Yeah. So I think this is the beauty of this particular product is that you get to preserve everything in one place and it's a repository of all your memories and then all the contributions. It's all packaged and beautifully packaged like, as if it were a book. Mm -hmm. So that way you don't have to go hunt and peck all over the place for stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think a, lo a lot of times how people m maybe preserve their memories or, or, or keep their stuff, they, they t probably tend to use a bunch of different tools. They might use like a Word document or a Google Sheet, and then all of a sudden they've got stuff all over the place. So how wonderful would it be to keep everything in one place so you don't have to go looking and searching all over for, for so stuff? So where is it living, on your server or my, my, my laptop? It's living on our servers, yeah. So we have a very secure server system since these are people's precious memories. And we use a data center that's actually on the main line in um, the Baltimore. Yeah. So, uh, so um, I can I can go from one computer to another, log in, and I can sort of mm -hmm. movable feast sort of thing where I can enter yeah. memories wherever I am in the world. That's correct. I, I live on Kauai now most of the time, and. Uh, so uh, when I'm home, all I'm the most creative people are on Kauai. Uh, Ruby, when are you moving to Kauai? I used to live on Kauai. Oh, that explains yeah, yeah. everything. I'm a city girl. I have, to come, water, to, yeah. I have to come back to the city. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm on my computer in Kauai, I can write from there, my jam bio from there. If I'm here, I have my little travel computer. If you want to do it by phone, you can, although writing a memory seems a little bit more than just phones, but these days. Well, I wanted to ask you about that because you know what's interesting about it is, it, you know, the, for me, anyway, the, I can have very creative moments where I'm not near a computer, mm -hmm. and I remember something, you know, for about maybe the Dodge Coronet, what have you, and I need to get it down because I forget those yeah. memories. They come and they go, yeah. it's like the Zen thing. They come and they go. So <clears throat> if I had a, like, dictation system on the phone, you know, voice to text or something, mm -hmm. I could throw in ideas on the fly and not lose them. Is this in the works? It is. We're not, uh, at this point in time, it would all be typing in, but we do have a lot of plans around uh, audio, um, both from a standpoint of you being able to speak in, and these days, too, the, um, the ability for the technology to take voice to text is actually pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. So we think it will work out well. And then also the reverse, where we can have your jam bio speak back to you if you want to, if someone wants oh, to hear read, it. Read from the text into yeah, audio. Yeah, so if you want to show it to, you know, grandma, and, um, you know, grandma wants to kind of see it and hear it, things like that. So How about pictures from the album? Yeah, you can add uh, photos. Mm -hmm. You can add photos. We're working on create, uh, uploading videos and, and various things like that. Yeah, so it's totally multimedia is, is the goal, like where we're headed. The videos, too. Hmm? Yep. So I can really make a terrific book out of it yeah, and, and, and send it to some relative and they will really know more about me than they ever, ever, ever yeah. did, yeah. Well, yeah. you get to pick which parts you want to include in your jam bio, too. So when I was talking about how you could purchase books, um, it, it wouldn't have to be everything you wrote. When you create a book, you pick exactly which chapters and sections you want to include for that particular book that you're creating. You know, I, I mentioned before, just as a kind of reverse twist, um, that it's kind of a time capsule in reverse, but you know, let me, let me suggest a scenario to you. <clears throat> I have family, uh, lots of things I'm not going to tell them. I mean, I, I personally would, but there are people out there yeah. who are not going to tell their family their background, their sordid past. Yes. Okay, but I make one of your jam bios, bioses, right? I make that. I put it all in there. Okay, and what is this? This, this is sitting by itself alone until I die. 
and when I die, it is released to my family, and they get to know everything about me, things they would never have right. otherwise known. Well, and this is my legacy to them. I'm telling yeah. them the whole story about everything. This is a great thing. I got to tell you something, Jay, because we got, we've only just recently opened it up to the public and only recently started getting users, but we actually received an email from a user the other day. And it was a woman, and she had written about how um, she was actually quite ill. She had a number of different illnesses. And um, she is a writer. And she said she had thought that her books would be sort of her legacy and how her children would know who she was. And she started using Jan Bios. And she said, what a wonderful thing that now I can write about each child and say my memories. I remember this wonderful thing about you and this about you in my jam bio, and I will be able to leave that for It is them. a great gift. It is a, a fabulous gift. A gift, unfortunately, that most people don't leave for their kids. Yeah. They never have that final moment where they can express exactly how they have felt about those well, kids. You know, another angle to this, too, is that kids could actually use it as a tool to interview their parents. Because, you know, like, I, I mean, I wish that this was had been around when my parents were alive, because I would have been able to have used it to ask them cer certain questions about their lives and then documented all of that. And, you know, just in that particular, that, that whole connection piece really is so valuable because now you're, you're, you're taking a whole different interest in your parents' lives more than just being parent-child. Now you're really interested about what are they really like as people, you know, mm -hmm. other than just that relationship. And you get to, to interview them and record all of those memories. And what a special gift that is, you know, in terms of creating a deeper connection. So you're playing in the interstices of the psychology of the family, of the individual. You're playing with feelings, you know. This is yeah. a way to characterize and mem memorialize your feelings. I'd like to tell you what, one of the, there were a number of things that inspired me about to create Jambios, but one of uh, the main factors was my family had a, a, a Google group email that was going around, and my father and my uncle were talking about the bar that they grew up in in Boston. Their father <laughs> owned a bar. And they were telling the stories in this Cheers. email. It, honestly, <laughs> they were telling the stories of the old barmaids, and they were doing all of this and that. And my cousins and I were just fascinated. Every yeah. day a new email would come in, and yeah. it was just the greatest thing it in the world. It takes you back. It takes you back yeah. to a time maybe you didn't know. It gives you historical yeah. context mm -hmm. on your own, yeah. you know, heredity. Yeah. So uh, let me let me ask you one other question. So we were talking about where you are on the line between conceiving of the idea mm -hmm. and making it a million billion. Okay. okay. <laughs> so you got to have some capital. Yeah. So what? Are you independently wealthy? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, we are self-funding it. So um, I'm fortunate enough to have this other business, Navscott Corporation, that I talked about. And so um, at this point, we are self-funding. Um, we've been talking to some of the local venture capitalists, a few of the nice people in town and uh, discussing some things with them. But we feel, too, that we can get, we have three different revenue uh, streams that we're looking at, and we think that, I mentioned the books. We think the books can happen pretty quickly. So I think we'll be bringing in some money fairly quickly on that. But we also have a whole um, uh, concept for corporate, uh, the corporate space. And what we'd like to do is be able to help companies be able to interact with consumers um, on a deeper level in, in an, with their nostalgia and memories of their products. So we talked about your Dodge, but what if the company, what if, who's Dodge? Is Dodge Dodge or is Dodge GM or something? GM, I think, okay. yeah. So if, if GM um, wanted to run some kind of sponsorship or campaign and, and say something like, um, you know, a contest with what was the best road trip that you ever took in yeah. the Dodge? Yeah. And everyone could put in their great memories. And yeah. what a wonderful way for these old nostalgic brands to be able to connect through their nostalgia with consumers. So we are looking at yeah, that. And they can use that material and going public the on the best, brand. The best testimonials would yeah, be testimonials. Of memories that they have. So the, other, the other corporate thing that comes to mind is the relationship of the individual with the corporation. Right. In other words, um, you know, you have memories about the Dodge, but also memories about the corporation, especially if you're senior and you've been around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have an historical, you know, context there, mm -hmm. uh, memories of how it was in the early days, and, yeah. and that would be very interesting. And, and even going further, you could go even further to the human resources aspect of this. How do you feel about the company? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that would be valuable if, if you yeah. could develop an environment where the employee would be candid. 
Uh, yes. But I think you can do that because you guys yeah. have the skill. So we're, we're out of time. I am so sorry to say. This has been really interesting. Ruby, I'm going to let you close, okay? Because you know how to do that. <laughs> what have we learned today? Summarize, all right? <laughs> well, we've learned about Jan Bios, and then uh, we've also learned about uh, how uh, important memories are as a part of our lives and also how that can also create deeper connections with people. Uh, and amongst peoples, especially when people are starting to collaborate and remember the memories together. And uh, I just told Beth that I kind of viewed it as crowdsourcing your memories, you know, because sometimes you'll have a memory, but when somebody else comes in, they may have had a totally different experience of it than you did. And now all of a sudden that story starts to build out and becomes wonderful, you know. I yeah. mean, not that yours wasn't wonderful, but it becomes <laughs> more rich and and varied because now you have other people's perspectives. Yeah, it's the intersection of computer science and sociology. Yep, that's it. Fabulous idea. Well, I wish you well, you guys. Thank it sounds you. very enriching and valuable as an experience we could all have. So, good luck. Thank you, Thank you Jay. Beth Carvin, Ruby Menon, thank you so much. Aloha.